back to the channel. I'm ODIJ and we're locked in. This is the recap for episode 7 of House of the Dragon. And it must be said at the beginning of every single video, you have to choose a side. Are you with the greens or are you with the blacks? Because we're choosing dragons and we need dragon riders. So if you are a bastard child of the Targaryen bloodline, then you need to step forward because this episode is for you. Now, before we jump into this and break down this episode, if you like House of the Dragon content, breakdowns, theories, predictions, recaps like this, then hit your subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button and I'm on that road to 50,000 subscribers. So I appreciate each and every one of you. Now, Rhaenyra had a plan, and the plan was to get anyone with Targaryen blood, whether you're a, a fifth cousin, a bastard child, somebody that knew somebody that knew somebody that knew somebody that was a Targaryen, we need you to show up because we need riders. So let's jump into it. This is the recap of episode seven, House of the Dragon. Rhaenyra and her dragon, Cyrix, they show up to Driftmark. And who do we see here? Adam and his new dragon, Sea Smoke. Now, we were all wondering how did this happen? Now, Rhaenyra, we're thinking that there's going to be some back and forth on how did you get this dragon? But she cuts straight to the chase. She's like, listen, you need to understand that I am the queen. And what do we see? Adam, he actually bends a knee and says, I'm here to serve my queen. Now, he doesn't mention anything about his father being the sea snake, Lord Corley, who is now Rhaenyra's hand. He just says he's here and he's finally getting that respect that he deserves. But plus, he has a dragon. And as he mentioned, he didn't go and tame Sea Smoke. Sea Smoke came and found him. We see Alicent getting 10 to over the cut that she got last week. She's in the Red Keep and she's telling the Grand Maester, listen, I just need to get away for a little bit. Now, Alicent's storyline was a little boring here. We know last week she was kicked out of the small council. So now she just wants to get away from the council, clear her mind a little bit and wander off in the woods because it was crazy how everyone turned on her when Renera sent in all the foods and supplies, the little care packages. So for her, it's like, let me just step away and gather my thoughts. Everyone's waiting on Queen Renera to show back up. Now they're talking about who potentially got sea smoke. Who is this rider? Now, if you're not Valerian, then you shouldn't be riding on none of these dragons. So the small council is saying, we need to arrest whoever this guy is, whoever stole this dragon. But it comes to find out that this person that we know is Adam actually works for Lord Corley's and the people that work on his ships. So he's thinking, wait a minute, who could it be? Now remember, Adam didn't mention that Corley's was his father. So they're just waiting on the queen to show up and she said he will not be locked up, whoever this mysterious rider of sea smoke is. Once everyone gets situated, Lord Corley's goes into Adam's room and he's talking to him. Now, they both know what's going on. This is father and son, but they never acknowledge it. So what Adam does is he requests permission to leave the ship to come and fly this dragon, Sea Smoke, and work hand in hand with Renera. Now, Corley, he's looking and he's wondering, how the hell did this happen? But he goes ahead and grants that permission and finally, Adam gets the recognition from his father that he always wanted. Because remember, he was telling Aaron, man, we could be rich. That's our dad. But now, Corley's is telling him, good job. Because, hey, you worked your way up, even though you were outcasted from me and disowned. Lord Oscar Tully shows up to talk to Damon. Now, remember, Damon was told the River Lords. We can't really trust them because they're from the mud. They're made out of mud. It means they're sticky. They at the bottom. But Damon needs this army. So what he tells Lord Oscar, well, Sir Oscar, is listen, you guys come, you guys work for us, and we'll look out for you. We'll give you the protection of our dragon. Now, everyone that's part of the Riverlands, they're looking at Oscar and they're saying, nah, can we really trust Damon? He's never been good for us. But Oscar takes a stance and says, I don't really like the way that Damon was treating us, but I do know that we do have a respect for the crown. And I knew that this could potentially be something good for us. Now you gotta understand Lord Oscar, he's very young. He took over cause his grandfather passed. And now he has all these grown men looking at him. Now you remember the episode where Sir Blackwood, he got into it with the Riverlands and they went ahead and slaughtered everybody. Well, Oscar tells Damon 
the only way you'll get my army is if you serve justice. Because Sir Blackwood, when he got rid of all of our people, he did that intentionally. So Damon, he's forced with one or two options. One, serve justice and behead Blackwood and get the army. Or two, do nothing and not get the army. Well, this is Damon we're talking about. Not Damon Targaryen, Day-Day Targaryen. What does he do? He grabs his sword and he begins to behead because he needs this army. And at this point, it's gonna take anything to win this war. Damon is still tripping out. So after this beheading, he goes into his room. And when he gets into his chambers, his brother, Lord Viserys is sitting there. And long story short, he's telling them, listen, I never wanted to be king. The queen that never was was supposed to be queen, but they chose me because I was a man. Now you, on the other hand, Damon, you always wanted this crown. Now here's your opportunity. Take this crown. But are you going to do the right thing or the wrong thing? But whatever you do, you better do the, the best thing for the crown. Back at King's Landing, King Aegon is in the bed. Now he's still going through a recovery because being caught on fire, let me tell you, it ain't no joke. There ain't no stunt doubles here. He was torched up. So they're trying to get him back up on his feet and to walk. Now, Lowry, you hear him, he's trying to get as much energy into Aegon as possible so he can get his rightful spot back. Because right now, the way Aemon's running things and bringing back Otto Hightower, he has no control. But Aegon, he doesn't have any strength and he's trying to fight through it. But everyone needs him back up because they see that Aemon potentially about to run King's Landing into the ground. And it's going to be King's stomping ground, no longer the landing. Corley's heads back to talk to Adam. Now, what he's telling Adam is, listen, I want you to run the ships. And I got some other news. Your brother, well, you know the mysterious dragon rider? Yeah, that's your brother. Aaron is a dragon rider and he's over there. And I really don't have much to say to you, but uh, I'm your father and you're going to get promoted up in the shipyard and your brother's a dragon rider. Corley's, he really doesn't know what to say to these boys, well, to these young men, except for, hey, hope you're doing good today. Renera is still trying to piece together what the hell didn't happen since Aaron has showed up and now he's riding a dragon and how the hell did this happen? But for her, it really doesn't matter as long as he's trying to serve the crown and the queen and the seven kingdoms. Now her son Jace comes in and he has valid points. He's saying, what if this random guy from a low value family wants to take his dragon and try to overthrow us? And Renero's like, listen, I've heard the story. I know how this is supposed to turn out. This isn't quite the exact way, but what are we supposed to do? We have a war. And if they're saying they're going to be on our side for right now, we just have to take that at face value and do what we can. Now, Jace, he's looking out for his mother, who is also the queen. But at this point, he's looking at it as a, I'm the prince. And we need to look at what's good for the seven kingdoms. Now, Renera, she's going along with the same plan he wanted to put in place. Let's find who can ride these dragons. So that's all we can go with right now. Well, word's been getting around King's Landing that Renera she's sending the ship now anyone that might be a bastard that might have targaryen blood they need to get on these ships and come on out there because they're looking for anyone that is potentially a dragon rider now oh we've been seeing him for a couple weeks and at first we're looking at him as just a drunk he's always saying i'm targaryen blood and everyone's like nah you're not targaryen he's like no i really am well once this word gets out they're like if you are then you need to go out there then everyone starts chanting, cause you know once peer pressure kicks in, oh, oh, oh. So he's like, all right, fine, I'm gonna go out there because they were gonna expose him and say, you always talking about being Targaryen. Well, here's your opportunity to prove it. Then we got Hugh. Now we seen Hugh when they were passing out the food, we seen him walking through the city with his wife. Now he claims to be Targaryen blood also. His mother was one of the nine children to King Jaehaerys. Now, turned out she was messing around, so they exiled her, and that's how he was born, and he's just out here. But he's telling his wife, listen, I am Targaryen blood. I've been hiding it from you. 
but I have to go out and at least see what I can do for my family bloodline because Renera needs anyone bastard kids or fifth cousins we just got to see whose bloodline actually made it through once they gather everybody up they go down to where the dragons are they enter in this cave and you see the workers talking about queen we not doing this none of these people are we don't even know if they really got targaryen blood and he's also mad about aaron having a dragon sea smoke because hey he's not a dragon lord either so right now all they do is tend to the dragon now the dragons don't respect them much because they still get ate and caught on fire but this is their job to tend the caves Renera gives a speech and lets everyone know if you're from targaryen blood then we will find out now it's not up to me to pick the dragon wire Vermithor is the second largest dragon, tame dragon, after Vagar, which is Amon's dragon. So once he or she chooses, that's who it is. So after she summons the dragon, she steps back and we're gonna watch the festivities. Well, let me tell you something. It doesn't go as planned. Well, it does go as planned if you were thinking like me. The dragon doesn't accept anybody. The dragon goes crazy. Catches this first person with a messed up face on fire. Everyone's running around. Renera's just up top watching. Man, people are falling off down into the cave. They're running around. And at this point, it is every Targaryen for themselves. People are running around everywhere. Stomped on, ate, caught on fire. The dragon keepers can't do anything. Renera's watching. They're begging for their lives. Man, this is what they call hell on earth right here. But Renera told them, there's gonna be some sacrifices. Some of you are gonna survive, some of you ain't. But the dragon has to do the talking. And right now, the dragon is doing the eat. Now Hugh, he's still alive. He was hiding a little bit. But when the dragon is getting ready to eat this woman, he comes out yelling, hey, hey, over here. Now when he stands in front of the dragon, the dragon is looking at him. Now remember, he is Targaryen. His mother was a whore that was exiled from the kingdom. His grandfather was Jaehaerys the first. Well, guess what? This dragon was also Jaehaerys. So the bloodline, it continued through. And well, he got him a dragon. He finally got him a dragon and he's part of the Targaryen bloodline officially. As for Ulf, he was running through the caves trying to get away. Now he ends up stepping into some, some feces. And well, it turns out there's another dragon in this cave, Silverwing. Silverwing is one of the nicest dragons. It never killed anybody on its own. It was just sitting in here. Now Oak fell back and it turns out he really is Targaryen because when Silverwing smells him, it goes ahead and lets him pet him. So now, Ulf and Hugh, they're our new dragon rider. The first thing Ulf does is get on his dragon and he flies to King's Landing. Now he's flying around and he's celebrating. I got a dragon. Well, Amon gets word and he runs out, hops on a horse and goes and get on Vagar. And he's starting to chase down whoever this random person is on a dragon because we haven't seen this dragon in years, many, many ages. But as Amon and Vagar get close, he has to turn around and the reason he turns around is because he sees Renera out there with all three of these dragons her Hugh all and not to even mention sea smoke is out here with Aaron yeah it's too many dragons versus just Vagar they got the second largest dragon and then we got two other dragons plus whenever Damon shows up with his dragon yeah this is very very scary hours when it comes to Amon and Vagar. All right, there you go. The recap of episode seven. Let me know what you think about Rhaenyra and her bastard clan of Targaryen. Is this a good thing? Is it gonna work out for her? And how is Amon in the greens gonna try to combat this? Because an army will work on the ground, but against dragons, Vagar is not gonna be able to take on all of these. But let me know what you think. I'm Moda J. This is episode seven. We got one episode left. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. 
We on the way. Season two is almost over. Thanks for watching. Jimmy on the beat, boy.